Okay, guys, let's see what Peter's up to today. Can you read your question, then read your extract to find your answers? Pause me now. Was Mr. McGregor expecting to see Peter? How do you know? Explain your answer. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! So Mr. McGregor, was Mr. McGregor expecting to see Peter? Your answer should be, yes, Mr. McGregor was expecting to see Peter or no, Mr. McGregor was not expecting to see Peter because. OK, so that because is the how do you know and the explaining your answer. So go back, pause me now. OK, so your answer was Mr. McGregor expecting to see Peter? How do you know? Explain your answer. Mr. McGregor was not expecting to see Peter because he was on his hands and his knees planting his young cabbages. Full stop. He jumped up and ran after Peter. So he was down on his hands and knees planting. He did not expect to be seeing a little rabbit that day. So read your questions, go to your extracts and find the answers. Pause me now. How does Peter feel? Where does he lose his shoes? Why does he rush all over the garden? So we've got three questions here. Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden for he'd forgotten the way back to the gate. He had lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. So how does Peter feel? So your sentence stem should start. Peter feels... Why does he rush all over the garden? So your sentence stem should be, he rushes all over the garden because. And where does he lose his shoes? He loses his shoes where? Okay, so pause me now and fill in your answers. Peter feels dreadfully frightened. Why does he rush all over the garden? Peter rushes all, all over the garden because he forgot his way back to the gate. And where does he lose his shoes? He lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. Read your questions, go to your extract and find your answers. Pause me now. Where does Peter Rabbit get stuck and what causes him to become stuck? After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons. Quite new. So where does Peter Rabbit get stuck? Peter Rabbit gets stuck. Fill in your answer. What causes him to become stuck? He becomes stuck because... Fill in your answer. Pause me now. Peter Rabbit gets stuck in a gooseberry net. What caused Peter to become stuck were the large, were the brass buttons on his jacket. Yeah, they were large. There's two adjectives, isn't it? By the large brass buttons on his jacket. Using cubes. Five times table today, and Jack has built some towers using cubes. Nice towers, Jack. And how many towers has he built? One, two, three, four. And how many cubes are in each tower? One, two, three, four, five. Five cubes in each tower. So how many cubes has he used altogether? Well, I'm going to use my fives to help me. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 20 cubes altogether. So how can I write that down? 4 times 5 is equal to 20. Well, some people say 4 lots of 5, or 4 groups of 5 are equal to 20. But there is another way. I could have written down 5 times 4 equals 20. And people say that 5 4 times is equal to 20. And they're both correct. Whitney has also been building some towers. Oh, brilliant. Yellow towers, Whitney. They're taller than she is. Pause the video here to answer the questions. How did you get on with those? Three towers she's built. 
five cubes in each tower. So five, ten, fifteen cubes altogether. And did you get the two ways of writing it? So we can have three times five is fifteen, or five times three is fifteen. Dexter's been building towers. Oh, his towers look a little different. They're taller. And they've not got five in each. Pause the video here to have a look at Dexter's towers. Ah, they've not got five in. But there are five towers. Maybe that can help us. Good luck. How did you get on with those? Five towers he's built. Seven cubes in each tower. So can I use my five times table to help me? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Yes, if I count the cubes up from the bottom, I can count up in fives. And that was five times seven. But I could also think of it as seven five times. What multiplication is being represented here? Pause the video and have a go. See if you can use your fives to help you. How did you get on with those? This first one is three groups of five or three times five, which is equal to 15. But it also could be five times three is 15. So there are two answers for all of them. Well, are there two answers for all of these? Let's have a look. Ah, 5 times 5 is 25. And then I suppose you could swap it round, but you'd still get 5 times 5 is 25. And then C and D are very similar to each other, aren't they? 1 times 5 is 5, just the same as 5 times 1 is 5. Here are some multiplications for you to have a go at. Good luck! Well done! What's about this one? An easy one, that one. You could use your twos or your fives. The quickest way for me is thinking of two lots of five, which is ten. Ooh, 8 times 5. You could count up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Or maybe if I know 4 times 5, then I know that 8 times 5 is double that. So 4 times 5 is 20, and double that would be 40. Easy. 10 times 5 is 50. Mm. You could count up 5, 10, 15, 20. Sounds like a very long way to get to 11 times 5. Maybe if you know 10 times 5 is 50, 11 times 5 must be 5 more. 55. A good way to look at these is to use an array. Maybe use some counters or some pieces of pasta and put them into groups of 5. Amir and Alex have some money. Here's Amir's money, and here's Alex's money. How much money have they got all together? Amir has got four lots of five pence, which is twenty pence. And Alex has got seven two pences, which is fourteen pence. So when we add twenty plus 14 is equal to 34 pence. Altogether, they've got 34 pence. Pause the video here and have a go at the White Rose Maths Worksheet. Or, if you'd like to, go to the BBC Bite Size website to complete the supplementary material. 
five times table today, and Jack has built some towers using cubes. Nice towers, Jack. And how many towers has he built? One, two, three, four. And how many cubes are in each tower? One, two, three, four, five. Five cubes in each tower. So how many cubes has he used altogether? Well, I'm going to use my fives to help me. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Twenty cubes altogether. So how can I write that down? Four times five is equal to twenty. Or some people say four lots of five, or four groups of five are equal to twenty. But there is another way. I could have written down five times four equals twenty. And people say that five four times is equal to twenty. And they're both correct. Whitney has also been building some towers. Oh, brilliant. Yellow towers, Whitney. They're taller than she is. Pause the video here to answer the questions. How did you get on with those? Three towers she's built, five cubes in each tower, so five, ten, fifteen cubes altogether. And did you get the two ways of writing it? So we can have three times five is fifteen, or five times three is fifteen. Dexter's been building towers. Oh, his towers look a little different. They're taller, and they've not got five in each. Pause the video here to have a look at Dexter's towers. Ah, they've not got five in, but there are five towers. Maybe that can help us. Good luck. How did you get on with those? Five towers he's built. Seven cubes in each tower. So can I use my five times table to help me? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Yes, if I count the cubes up from the bottom, I can count up in fives. And that was five times seven. But I could also think of it as seven five times. What multiplication is being represented here? Pause the video and have a go. See if you can use your fives to help you. How did you get on with those? This first one is three groups of five, or three times five, which is equal to 15. But it also could be five times three is 15. So there are two answers for all of them. Well, are there two answers for all of these? Let's have a look. Ah, five times five is 25. And then I suppose you could swap it round, but you'd still get five times five is 25. And then C and D are very similar to each other, aren't they? One times five is five, just the same as five times one is five. Here are some multiplications for you to have a go at. Good luck. Well done. What's about this one? An easy one, that one. You could use your twos or your fives. The quickest way for me is thinking of two lots of five, which is ten. Ooh, eight times five. Could count up five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Or maybe if I know four times five, then I know that eight times five is double that. So four times five is twenty. And double that would be 40. Easy. 10 times 5 is 50. Hmm. 
Mm. You could count up 5, 10, 15, 20. Sounds like a very long way to get to 11 times 5. Maybe if you know 10 times 5 is 50, 11 times 5 must be 5 more. 55. A good way to look at these is to use an array. Maybe use some counters or some pieces of pasta and put them into groups of five. Amir and Alex have some money. Here's Amir's money and here's Alex's money. How much money have they got all together? Amir has got four lots of five pence, which is 20 pence. And Alex has got seven two pences, which is 14 pence. So when we add 20 plus 14 is equal to 34 pence. Altogether, they've got 34 pence. Pause. Hello team, let's have another look to see if we can find that metal thief. Thief is a word I struggle to say. I don't know why and I didn't know when till today. Well, this week. Okay, so have a pause now and read clue for common exception cups, please. So pause me now to read your challenge. You go to look for clues in the trophy room. Each trophy has a picture of a common exception word on it. Can you spell the words on the cups correctly? The letters in the boxes spell out a clue about the metal thief's surname. Ooh. Okay. So the words that you need to spell out. The first one is school. So it's the second letter of the word school that you need to um, remember so you're going to write the word school and it's the second letter that you're going to take to put into the surname it's going to give excuse me sorry it's going to give us some letters and we're going to spin them around like we did with the word brown and figure out what the surname is okay your second word to spell is door you're going to use the word door and you're going to take the third letter of door your third word is plant you're going to take the second letter of the word plant your fourth word is money and you're going to take the second letter of the word money your fifth word is going to be the word just had to check house it's going to be the word house and it's the third letter of the word house and your sixth and final word is going to you're going to spell out the word children and you're going to take the third from last letter okay so pause me now spell those words we'll pause me in a minute spell those words and steal those letters from each of those words and let's see if we can make a surname word from them so pause me now okay so you can see if you've spelt your words correctly if you haven't you need to have a little look back and you need to make sure you've got it right because the metal thief surname is and you can see the word color can be made by using each letter by using one letter from each word so the metal thief sur surname is a color now we've got a few colors to be looking at so look we've got what are the surnames first name surnames we've got green and we've got what we've got two people with surnames so it could be Alfie Green because he has size eight shoes he has brown hair and he has blue eyes it could also be Claire White because she has size eight shoes she has brown hair and she has blue eyes we need one more clue I'll see you tomorrow for it So, do you want to add anywhere else to your list? Because we've read some more about Peter this morning in our guided reading. So, do you want to add another sentence to describe somewhere else that he's been? Now, we're going to be having a look at the owl that's made in cow and the owl that is made in pound, okay? 
So select the correct word from the box to go with each picture and then try to write a sentence using that word, which is linked to the tail of Peter Rabbit. OK, so each of these words has a link somewhere taken as to the Peter Rabbit story. Now, if you don't get the exact link, do not worry. The main idea is to get excitement, engagement and correct spelling. So. The word down is the example that we've used here. Peter Rabbit bent down to eat a carrot. Now, there's lots more exciting vocabulary that I could put in there. Peter Rabbit, what could we use instead of bent? Jumped. He jumped down to what, what verb could we use instead of eat? We could use to gobble a carrot. We could add an adjective. What kind of carrot was it? A juicy carrot. So Peter Rabbit jumped down to gobble a juicy carrot. They're the kind of sentences I'm looking for. So then our next one, which word? So make sure you get the owl spout bob on and then put it into a sentence. I'm going to move, jump over to the next page because it's got the one. So we've got owl that needs, you can draw a picture. You can write your word underneath and then write a sentence next to it. Please make sure that your spellings or bob on, please, especially house. That's one that I know that some of us are stumbling on. So draw your picture, label it, and then do a sentence for me. Pause me now. Don't forget the owl. Now, if you would like to, this is just an extra little bonus. Can you organise this on your page? So I don't need the sentences per se, but I wonder if you can figure out using the clues across and down and the words that are at the top, which words go where. So this is just an extra challenge for fun. If it's not fun, you don't need to do it. OK, pause me now. Hi, guys, the team in Britain are doing an incredible job of keeping the community really tight it's inspirational they're amazing so the Britain million have put together the idea of a time capsule and so this is something that I've taken from their Facebook page I don't know if you want to have a little look more in detail there but you, they want stories they want poems they want photos of the things that you've been busy doing anything that you do you can bring into school and we can use in school and you can take it to the times capsule if you do anything electronically which it sounds like they would like and we would like too so it's two birds with one stone isn't it you can do things for them and things for us so have a little read and get anything off that you've been busy doing they want to see it as much as we do one of the things that they talked about was that you could do a news report about your experience. And so here are a couple of ideas about you could any. Now, it doesn't need to just be on coronavirus. It can be on something that you did in the day at home. So it could be a newspaper on what you did during coronavirus and you could do a whole topic on it. Or it could be something really specific. Have you invented an amazing game that you and your brothers and sisters have played? There are no rules about this. You can create whatever you want to create. It also suggests a diary. So we've been busy writing diaries during this time. You might not, they might be personal. You might not want to use that or you might be happy to share, but you could write a diary piece and you could think back at some of the best times and the trickiest times, the in-between times, and you could have a little reflect back and write one piece about your time during lockdown. This is just taken from the Britain Millenn Millennium um, web page. So these are all the different things that they're offering. So I'm sure you have, I'm sure you're more aware of it than me, but if you haven't had a look, go and check it out. They're doing some awesome things. This is a little competition for, not a competition, this is a little activity for pen pals. So this is the form that you can fill out on the website. And you've got lots of different options. One of them being that if you want to keep your address private, then that's your choice. And that you can give it to the Britain Millennials. I keep wanting to call them the Britain Millennials, the Britain Million, and they will exchange it for you. So if it's your um, address that you're unsure about then we can look around that so that looked like a really interesting exciting activity you could make a new friend during this and then we would like any of your memories so like the 
Brit and Million have asked for. We would like for the, your memories of the good, the bad, the everything in between of what you've been doing during lockdown. So if you can provide us with a photo so when we're coming back into school we can all share these and it'll be something to talk about because we're all going to have had really different experiences. So bring a if you want to email photos that I can forward on into school, if you want to do a little write up, there are no rules about this. There are no rules about how you can display what it is that you've been busy do doing during lockdown. But we'd love to hear and see it, please, guys. So I've put a little here. This time has been a big medley of ups and downs as we think about coming back to school we'd like to create the little book of lockdown start to gather some photographs and begin to share ideas for us to discuss further in school why have you picked this memory and what happened and then we've got a connected curriculum curriculum menu for you to have a little challenge and have a little look at so i know we've had some fabulous maps of britain come in so when you get into the end of that and you've explored some of the Britain I still want in millennium millions then you can come back to this so that hopefully that should be enough to keep you busy if you're still looking for more get in touch and we'll find we'll find some more things for you to be busy with